Well, let me ask about AUKUS now. It's, I've said this morning, it's my understanding it's in excess of $150 billion over 30 years, the spend of it. Do Australians just have to wear that cost? Well, we are experiencing the most difficult and challenging strategic environment in our history. Um, AUKUS was a product of the Morrison government. It was a, a central achievement, the negotiation of this agreement. And when Scott Morrison announced the agreement, he said we'd take a period of 18 months to uh, look at the capabilities and, and look at what was the best options for Australia. And uh, in the next couple of days, we will hear the announcement from, from the government as to uh, the submarine program. Uh, the Coalition's in lockstep with the government on, on this. We support, uh, we support AUKUS. It was, it was our signature policy. We want to ensure that the submarines are uh, delivered in a timely manner and that they're properly, uh, properly resourced because uh, for Australia's defence capability, given where we are and given the strategic environment we face, we've got to ensure that we have the capability to meet the challenges that we face. Now, the PM said in India yesterday, this is why we need things like the super tax changes. We need as much revenue as we can get to pay for this. What do you say to that? Well, I say when the Coalition was in government, we took defence spending from 1938 levels to 2% of GDP. We committed to $270 billion worth of defence expenditure out to 2030, and we did all of that without raising taxes. Uh, we, we want to see the purchase of, uh, uh, of, of these submarines. We want to see the AUKUS program going forward. Uh, we offer bipartisan support for that. Um, but we've demonstrated that you can provide for defence expenditure without raising taxes. Would you be disappointed if the proposed Eastern Australia submarine base doesn't get off the ground? Uh, look, I, I think ultimately these are matters for, for the government, uh, but the, the, the benefit of the AUKUS program is obviously access to nuclear submarine technology that the only uh, Britain and America have shared with each other, so this is a, a, a huge thing for Australia. It allows a country with a very large coastline like ours to, to defend ourselves and it provides for jobs uh, for Australians. But the details of that announcement we will see from the government in the next few days. Just very brief now, as Shadow Attorney-General, what do you make of Tony Burke's interventions in these court cases on behalf of the STA and T TWU? Well, look, uh, I, I'm not, uh, not in favour of Tony Burke's interventions in, in these court cases. I don't think it's the right thing for him to be doing. These are private disputes between, um, you know, uh, 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 businesses and their employees, and I think it's better left with as between businesses and their employees. The Coalition did intervene from time to time, though, on behalf of employers, probably. Well, I, I think the principle is basically that you want employers and employees to make their own arrangements. All right, just finally, the AAT, you've had a lot to say about this being abolished by the government. Mm. Would you... Uh, what can you say about this and would you reinstate it if it returned to well, government? Well, this isn't an abolition. This is a purge of people that were appointed by the Coalition. Uh, the, the government has basically gone around saying that there are people that were unqualified. Their so-called unqualified people include people who were university medalists, who've served on state tribunals, who've been registrars of the Supreme Court, a sex discrimination commissioner, the head of the Accounting Standards Board, uh, people who have degrees from Oxford and Cambridge partners in law firms, barristers of long standing. Um, this is basically a political purge designed for la Labor to stack the tribunal with its mates uh, and to weaken the border. You had a lot of Liberal country. connected appointments, though. Well, didn't you? but when you look oh, at both the, sides seem to when, do when, it. When, when you look at the list of um, uh, of people that Mr. Dreyfus and Crikey and the Australia Institute want to get rid of, there are people who've just merely been members of the Liberal Party. This sounds McCarthyist to me. Uh, service in the Parliament, either as a parliamentarian or as an advisor, should not preclude people from appointment if you're otherwise uh, acceptably, qu acceptably qualified. But the big issue, Andrew, here is that the AAT deals with our border protection matters. It allows people to appeal decisions of the migration officials. It allows people to um, appeal decisions about the character determinations where people get thrown out of the country, as Peter Dutton often did, uh, when people are sex offenders or bikies or engaged in organised crime. What I think this really is about is Labor trying to stack the tribunal with left-wing activists and Labor lawyers in order to undermine our border protection system. And we in the Coalition just will not stand for that. Julian Lisa, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Andrew.